Hello everyone, welcome back to Chemical Engineering and Aspen channel. As you know, these days we are focusing on the module of Chemical Reaction Engineering. So in this regard, we are bringing the lecture number 46 for our valuable viewers. And in today's course coverage, we will extend our previous discussion and we will see how we can select different reactors and the different operating conditions related to the reactor operation. Let us assume that there are two reactants in the system now. Previously, we have seen that for one reactant and now we are extending our discussion to the second reactant as well that A plus B goes to D which produces desired product and the reaction rate constant for this system is K1. And then there is an undesired product and the reaction rate constant for that system is K2. Now, if we rewrite the rate law, R of D which is the rate of formation of product D is equal to K1, CA raised to power alpha 1, CB raised to power beta 1, where alpha and beta are the reaction orders in the system. For R of U, it will be K of 2, CA raised to power alpha 2, CB raised to power beta 2. And if we have to write minus R equation or equation for rate of disappearance of A, it will be equal to rate of formation of the product D and rate of formation of product U. So accordingly, minus Ra is equal to Rd plus Ru. Now substituting the values, minus Ra is equal to K1 Ca raised to power alpha 1, Cb raised to power beta 1 plus K2 Ca raised to power alpha 2, Cb raised to power beta 2. And if we have to write the formula of selectivity, which is Sd by U is equal to Rd over Ru and that is equal to K1 Ca raised to power alpha 1, Cb raised to power beta 1 over K2 Ca raised to power alpha 2, Cb raised to power beta 2 or we can rewrite it as SD by U is equal to RD over RU, KD over KU if we represent K1 as K of D and K2 as K of U, CA raised to power alpha 1 minus alpha 2 and CB raised to power beta 1 minus beta 2. For simplicity or for comparison with previous system, I have represented it as KD and KU otherwise you can write it as K1 over K2 as well and obviously our objective is to maximize the value of this instantaneous selectivity. Now, what are the criteria for the selection of the reactor? There are five different criteria which we have to keep in mind. Number one is safety, then selectivity, then yield, temperature control, and finally the cost. This is not a sequence. There are five criteria which we have to follow while selecting the reactor. Now, there are different types of reactors given over here. Number one, you can see is CSTR. A and B are fed to the reactant, and then we get the product. In the same way for the tubular reactor, both reactants are fed to the reactor and we get the product. Then in part C, it's a batch reactor. In part D, it's a semi-batch reactor. Now D and E both are semi-batch reactor, but the difference is that in first reactor, A is already fed while B is fed continuously. While in semi-batch 2, B is already fed or charged to the system while the feed of A is continuous in the system. We will see in our upcoming lecture how that two are different and where which reactor to be used. Then part F and G both are tubular reactors and both have side streams but in first case A is fed to the system while B is entered at different places or at side stream. While in that case B is fed to the system while A is fed as side stream. Then in H type, you can see that A is the main reactant which is flowing through the system while B is or fresh B is added to each reactant. These are the different types and we have to select based on these five parameters which reactor to be used. Again, selectivity will decide or will play a major part in it along with other important parameters such as cost, safety and so on. Then you can see these two are the reactors which include the recycling phenomena that both reactants are fed to this tubular reactor. The product is recycled, obviously it is cooled and then recycled. Like you can see the two reactors with recycle can be used for highly exothermic reactions. Here recycle stream is cooled and returned to the reactor to dilute and cool the inlet stream, thus avoiding the hot spots and runaway reactions. This one could be used for gas phase reactions and this one for the liquid phase reaction. The same phenomena is going there that the product is cooled and then is fed to the system. Then we have some advanced reactors which are membrane and 
reactive distillation. These are used for those type of reactions where the equilibrium lies far to the left. It means that to the reactant side. So obviously we have to remove one product from the system to continue the completion. Like you can see that A and B are fed to the system. C and D are produced. But we have removed C so that the reaction can be proceeded to the right side. Accordingly, the membrane reactor is used for thermodynamically limited gas phase reactions while reactive distillation is used for the liquid phase reactions. When one of the product has a high volatility, then the species in the reactor. So these are the different type of reactors which we have seen like starting from the simple CSTR, tubular, batch, semi-batch. Then we have moved it to a bit advanced that tubular with side streams, then CSTR in series then tubular and CSTR with recycle, this one for gas phase, this one for liquid phase, then membrane reactor for gas phase and reactor distillation for liquid phase. So these are the different types and again, which type do we choose? It's dependent on the five parameters which we have seen. Again, I will show you that these are safety, selectivity, yield, temperature control and cost. So in the next lecture, we will see that how based on selectivity we will select a suitable reactor for our operation and we will generate the same cases as we have developed in our previous lecture which was lecture number 45. So I hope you have understood all the aspects of this lecture. If you have any queries, feedback, suggestion, please provide it in the comment box and I would be happy to answer it. So that's it for today's lecture. Thank you so much. Please do watch, like, share the video and subscribe to the channel. Also click on the bell icon to get all updates related to this channel.